and welcome to Top Gear GTA 5 Edition. Tonight we start with the Grady Turismo R. When this car was first released in the Business Update DLC, it was clear that it was going to be the best supercar in GTA. It was the first hybrid supercar ever released in a GTA game. Its aerodynamic body mixed with composite materials such as carbon fiber, its low drag coefficient, and its onboard electric motors meant that it was technically a hypercar. This car is indeed in a class entirely of its own, and it is the best supercar in GTA 5 up until now. Now the Turismo R has a new competitor, the Pegasi Zentorno. Zentorno is heavily, heavily based off the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento. It's powered by a 6.8 liter V12 engine. And if that wasn't enough, it too features onboard hybrid technology. It utilizes the electric motors during gear shifts so that you have constant acceleration. It is by far the fastest accelerating car in the entire game. It can go 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds, and that's with a stock engine. And unlike the Turismo R, it also features all-wheel drive, so it grips the road better. This car does not come cheaply, however. It will cost you $725,000, which is $225,000 more than the Turismo R. So, the Zentorno looks the part of a supercar, with its sharp edges and massive and aggressive lines. The Zentorno's price tag certainly plays the part of a supercar, costing three quarters of a million dollars. But does it actually perform the way you'd expect a supercar to? In one word, no, it doesn't, actually. The way this thing drives, it isn't like a supercar. It resembles more like, hmm, a fighter jet. However, there is a problem. If you choose to buy this car for $725,000, the one thing you should know is that it doesn't come with a steering wheel. Or rather, it comes with one, it just doesn't work. When compared to the McLaren P1, or Turismo R, rather, this car might as well be a train. Which, honestly, surprises me. With its high acceleration and four-wheel drive, I thought this car would be a beast around the corners. However, it's still the best-looking car in the game, and the fastest in a straight line. Even though you might have to brake earlier in this car compared to the McLaren, it's actually more fun to drive. So, if you're somehow not rich in GTA 5 already, and you can only choose one of these cars, I would definitely go with the Zentorno. Of course, none of this really matters. What matters is how fast each one of these cars goes around our track, and of course that means handing it over to our tame racing driver. Some say that he is the fastest driver ever around K1 Speedway track, but only on Tuesdays, and that his brain naturally produces marijuana. All we know is he's called Daniel. Alright, and starting off with the Zentorno here, and quick off the line with the all-wheel drive, heading up to the first couple of turns here, braking hard as you have to in this car, it's a, bit, a little bit heavier. Turns here, and then finally the hammerhead, again breaking hard. Oh, coming a little wide around the corner here. Weaving in and out, and good. Looks clear, looks clear, but no, bus is coming up. And can you cut right through them? Yes, all right. Coming through the straightaway, building up that speed. Breaking hard and early, coming around, catching some air, but no problem for the all-wheel drive. 
Coming up to the hairpin turn. Alright, e-braking. Might lose a little speed there. And the last stretch, last stretch. Coming up and across the line. Now it's time for the Turismo R. Struggling a little bit there, getting off the line. Not as much grip as the Zentorno, but ooh. Cutting through these corners really clean. This car is indeed a lot lighter than the Zentorno. Ooh, looks like he brakes late here, but doesn't swing as wide as the Zentorno. Again, this brakes are excellent on this car, a very light car. Coming up to the buses, can he cut through this? Ooh, looks good. The straightaway is really, you can really build up some speed right here. Coming up to the turn, ooh, brakes a little early. Finally, the last turn, the hairpin. This one's, oh, 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 struggles to get a little grip there again. Coming in for the home stretch here. And across the line. So the Zentorno did it in 54.02 seconds. And the Turismo R, well, it did it in 54.62 seconds. So the Zentorno is six tenths of a second faster. The Stig did tell me, however, if he didn't break so early on this last turn here, he thinks he could have beaten the Zentorno. That is it for this week, but next week we will be having a 4th of July special. We have explosions, fireworks, new guns, new muscle cars, and, well, don't forget freedom. See you next week.